Hi friends, kumusta? So, welcome back. For today's video, we will be talking about the working hours of international students. Like, how many hours can they work during on or off campus? Their work hours during their semester break or their scheduled break. Also, with their co-op work experiences, I will also give you samples of study permit and work permit that have indication or condition on how many hours does an international student work here in Canada. I actually provided a little bit of information about working hours of international students in the last video that I posted. So I suggest after this, watch that video because I also provided the worst scenarios that an international can experience here in Canada. By the way, if you don't know me, my name is Jason Jim and I am making videos about international students, workers, or even residents here in Canada. So don't forget to give a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I also suggest to hit the notification bell so that you will be updated every time that I post the video. So let's begin. Okay, so as you know, being international student here in Canada, you are privileged to study and work off or on campus. And the first thing that you need to know for your working hours is your study permit. Your study permit indicates whether you can work on or off campus. If it doesn't have any work condition, what you need to do, you can ask to have these condition indicated in your work permit if you are eligible to work off campus. Don't worry, there is no additional fee for you to add this condition in your work permit. So what you should do is to check your permit once the immigration has given you. So once you landed here in Canada, you will go to the immigration. So make sure that your documents is ready and available so that if asked you any kind of documents, you can hand over to the immigration officer. So once immigration officer gave you your permit, check all of the information and also the condition of your permit. But if you were not able to check your permit and there is no condition indicated in it, what you need to do is to request an amendment for your study permit before you apply for SIN or the social insurance number in Service Canada. So this is the example of a study permit. The first part is the client information which consists of your name, date of birth, sex, country, travel documents, for example, your passport. The second additional information is about the date issued of your study permit and it's also expiration date, the institution name, your field of studies, and the last part is the condition which is the most important. As you can see, it says there that you may accept employment on or off campus. So it means to say that you can work off or on campus. So in my case, aside from the study permit that I received, I also got a work permit because the program that I chose had a co-op term. So it means to say that I can work for one term or one semester which is also included or part of the program. I will be showing you the sample of work permit later on once we discuss about the co-op work experience. The next thing that we will talk about is working off and on campus. So if you say off campus, it is any location outside the boundaries of the campus of the educational institution which the student is registered. So if you will work off campus, you can only work for the maximum of 20 hours per week. On the other hand, if you stay on campus, this is the employment facilities within the boundaries of the campus. So the students are only allowed to work on the campus of the educational institution at which they are registered in full-time studies. So make sure that you are a full-time student for you to work on campus. But if an institution has campuses in different cities, the student is restricted to work on the institution's campus where they are registered as a full-time student. For example, in my school, I studied at Conestoga College and there are five campuses which are the Kitchener, Guelph, Waterloo, Cambridge, and Brantford. I was registered in Kitchener campus, but in Kitchener, there are two campuses 
which are the Dune Campus and the Kitchener Downtown Campus. If I chose to work in Dune Campus or Kitchener Downtown Campus, I can possibly work on those either two um, campuses because those campuses are in the same municipality. But if I wanted to work in Guelph, which is other city or other municipality, I cannot work on that campus because it is in other municipality. You can work at any number of jobs on campus. And also, there is no restrictions on the number of the hours that the student can work on campus. Unlike off campus, you just only have 20 hours per week. Okay, so the next thing that you need to know about working hours of international student is you can work off campus if you are a full-time student. Yes, so it means to say that you can work off campus if you are a full-time student. If you are enrolled and you are a part-time student, you can't work off campus. So for example, if a student is enrolled full-time in a regular academic session and becomes part-time during the same semester, maybe because the student dropped the subject in that same semester, he or she is considered now a part-time student. So in that case, if you become a part-time student, you should not work off campus. So it means to say that you can only work off campus if you are a full-time student. Okay, so the next thing that you need to know about working hours of international student is working full-time during scheduled breaks. The examples of scheduled breaks are the winter or summer holidays or fall or spring reading week. So it means to say that you are free to work full time or even overtime and you can also work two part-time jobs that add up to a higher number of working hours. So it means to say that you can work more than 20 hours per week. The second one is you can work full time but you must be a full time student both before and after the scheduled break. So for example, in your program, the first semester is from January to April. And then after that semester, you will be having a scheduled break. Your next semester will be from September to December. So it means to say that you can work full-time from May to August. That's the reason why that you must be a full-time student before and after your scheduled break. The next for working full-time during scheduled break is the maximum duration of regularly scheduled breaks. So if an institution allows for a back-to-back -back scheduled breaks, the students are only allowed and eligible to work off campus during the first 150 consecutive days. So it means to say that they cannot work for the entire break if it is longer 150 consecutive days but take note for the regularly scheduled breaks students may only work off campus on a full-time basis for the total of 180 days each calendar year okay so the fourth one is you can't work during a break that comes before you start your very first school semester okay so for example your semester starts on january but you want to go to Canada as early as possible and try to work. So in this part, even if you go early in Canada, you are not allowed to work because you haven't started your class yet. All right, so the next one is, if your program doesn't have scheduled breaks, you can work up to 20 hours per week. So I receive a lot of questions about this part. So it means to say that you should be aware and you should know if your program has scheduled breaks because not all programs have scheduled breaks. What I suggest is ask your school if your program has a scheduled break or not. If ever that you don't have a scheduled break, you can only work off campus for 20 hours per week. Okay, so the next is student can work full-time if he or she decides to undertake a full-time or part-time course during a scheduled break. So it means to say in this part, that students who are enrolled like full-time during academic sessions before and after a 
regularly scheduled break and he or she decides to um, to get some subjects for full-time or part-time load during the scheduled break, he or she is still eligible to work full-time off-campus. So for example, the winter semester is my scheduled break. Since there are subjects that are available in that semester, I decided to take some of the subjects. So even I am studying part-time, in my scheduled break, I can still work full-time off-campus. Okay, so the next is, students cannot create their own break in a program. If a program of study does not have or does not provide a regularly scheduled break and a student creates their own break in the program, it is considered leave from studies. So those students who create their break on their program, they are not eligible to work off or on campus during that break. Okay, so the last thing about scheduled break is the intensive programs. So some intensive programs may not have a regularly scheduled breaks. So the students who are participating in this kind of program may work a maximum of 20 hours per week during the entire program of study. For example, your program has a total of four semesters and you don't have an in-between scheduled break. So your program is considered an intensive program because you are continuously studying. And in that case, you only work for 20 hours per week for the whole program. Okay, so the last thing that you need to know about working hours of international student here in Canada is co-op work experience. Co-op is actually an internship or the on-the-job training. So if the designated learning institution considers a co-op student with a co-op work permit to have a full-time status during the work experience, which is the portion or part of the program, the student may be eligible to work off campus on top of their co-op work hours. Like in my case, I was also a co-op student. So when I got here in Canada, I went to the immigration officer and then they provided me two permits. The first one was the study permit and the second one is the work permit which is a co-op work permit. So this is the example of the work permit that I had. Same thing, the first section is the client information but the second additional information it is still the same but it has the employment location and type of occupation. If you can see, the occupation that indicated there is co-op. And in the remarks or observations, it says there that this is only for work forming an essential or integral part of the course as per Conestoga College instructions. This cannot be used as a postgraduate work permit. So this work permit is used for the co-op work experience alone. So that is the reason why I received two permits which are the study permit and the work permit under co-op program. So what happened to me was I had my co-op for one semester in a food service industry. And take note, it is a paid co-op as well. Aside from the food service industry that I was working during my co-op term, I also worked in a hotel. That was the reason why I was able to save money for my next tuition fee. I made a video about saving 25% of my tuition fee from my co-op and from my another job which was in a hotel. That is the reason why that choosing a program is really important. It is also a strategy on how you can save, on how you can support yourself here in Canada while studying and working as well. Okay, so those are the things that you need to know about working hours of an international student. But take note, if you will not comply to the conditions and all these information as an international student, as per IRCC, non-compliance with the study permit conditions or the act of working without authorization may result in enforcement action. It may also negatively affect your future applications made under the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act 
and the IRPR. So it means to say that you need to follow these rules, you need to comply with the information indicated in your work permit or study permit so that it will not affect your future application. For example, your post-graduation work permit or even your permanent residency application. So what I suggest is that make sure that you know all of the conditions and you should follow all of it. So thank you so much and I really hope that this video helps you understand on how many hours or what are the conditions being an international student if you are working on campus or off campus. If you do, don't forget to give a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I suggest to hit the notification bell so that you will be updated every time that I post a video. Thank you so much again. My name is Jason Jim. See you to my next video. Bye!